I love the energy. When the vocals start to lay out, particularly on that last chorus, I think that's the... Those guys are the hit machine singer-songwriters Chris Tomlin and Ben Fielding. And that's not just any song they're working on. They're rearranging the oldest Christian hymn ever discovered, complete with a nearly 2,000-year-old lyric and melody. It's ancient, it's in Greek, and it's been buried in Egypt a long time. Our plan is to bring it back to life. Almost 1,800 years ago, in the Egyptian city of Oxyrhynchus, Christians gathered together to sing a hymn of praise, a hymn that was eventually buried in the sands of time. This is where it all began. This is where ancient Christians put pen to papyrus to compose the first hymn. Lost for centuries, this scrap of ancient music was found by two English scholars, Bernard Grenfell and Arthur Hunt. The papyri themselves were found in rubbish dumps, actually, at the city of Oxyrhynchus. So I guess after they had finished using these texts, they had thrown them away, uh, swept them away, uh, and they were in these massive mounds that were all littered on the site. The fragments range from about the late 1st century BC up until the 7th century AD. And we have information about ancient cities, about the people, what they were doing, but also of things like their religion. And it was a monastic uh, city, so we have this Christian evidence as well. Among the half a million fragments discovered here was our song, a song that hasn't been heard in this place oh. since ancient times. Grenfell and Hunt had only a vague idea of what they'd uncovered. These fragments were simply catalogued, packed in biscuit tins, and sent here to the University of Oxford. And the Christian hymn is a remarkable discovery because it is Christian, it's the only Christian uh, piece of music using the ancient pagan notation. It isn't really any different from that earlier music in terms of the way it uses the melodic structures. So the tune was typical of the period. We could almost call it pop music for ancient Greek-speaking Egyptians. It's the ideas in the song that are anything but typical. Beneath the squiggles indicating the melody are lines of Greek poetry, proclaiming a message that would come to define all forms of Christianity. And some have claimed this message wasn't believed by Christians this early. And what do we sing? Patera huion hagion pneuma, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Now, scholars often say this line is of some interest. And what they mean is it's amazing. This is the doctrine of the Trinity, the Christian idea that the one God is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And you sometimes hear that that idea was only invented much later, say in 325 at the Council of Nicaea, when Emperor Constantine forced this doctrine on the church. But the thing is, Here's the idea in a song from the previous century. The unknown composer of P. Oxy 1786 didn't use the lofty sacred music we associate with later monasteries and churches. The melody is just the sort of thing you'd hear in an ancient Greek theater or down at the local tavern. It's music for everyone not just the holy huddle. So we're giving this song back to the public. Well, if architecture is for admiring, uh, food and wine for tasting, songs are for singing. We've talked to the ancient experts about P. Oxy 1786, but if we want to resurrect this hymn for a new audience, we've got to talk to a couple of my friends, some of the most accomplished Christian songwriters in the world today. Shining stars, not sound, rushing rivers. 
Chris Tomlin and Ben Fielding have examined the original melody and lyrics to produce a new song of praise suited for the 21st century. From tentative beginnings, we'll witness the hard creative choices, the recording sessions, the mixing, and finally, the release of the new first hymn on album and in concert. Our hope is to return a song that the church and the public hasn't sung for nearly 2,000 years. Join us on this historical, spiritual and musical journey from the tombs of Egypt to the libraries of Oxford and then on to recording studios in one of the music meccas of the world as we work to bring this first hymn back to life. Welcome to the First Hymn Project.